This is Mr. Max with Sankofa Mathematics. So today I am doing a few questions on uh, trigonometry, mixed ones. So this is part one of a three-part series. Okay, so here you have a diagram and it's a right angle triangle as you can see, triangle ACX. And then also you have got triangle BCX, also right angle triangle. And AB is equal to 4 centimeters, and BC is equal to 6 centimeters, and then the angle ABC is 150 degrees. Then they are saying the line CX is perpendicular, meaning that makes 90 degrees, to the line ABX. Therefore, it's a right angle triangle. Come to think about it, it's about two of them, you know, one just on top of the other. Find the exact length of BX. So you have to find what BX is, and then you're supposed to show that the that angle CAB, that is this little acute angle here, is equal to arctangent of 1 upon 4 plus 3 root 3. Okay. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and calculate this missing angle here, which is 30 degrees, because you can easily see that. It should add up to 180. And then... The cosine of 30 degrees, if you use the cosine, cosine is because you're looking for BX, right? So it's adjacent over the hypotenuse. And once you want to make BX the subject, so to speak, of the formula, you want to find BX, you're supposed to multiply 6 times the cosine of 30 degrees. Now, if you remember from our special angles, then if you have a 30 degree and the adjacent, or you want to find the cosine of 30 degrees, it's root 3 upon 2. So that's the measurement that we are going to plug in here. You can also definitely find it with your calculator. Alright, so that's going to give me 6 times root 3 upon 2, which then simplifies to 3, root 3. So that's the value or the length of Bx. Now, if you have to find the whole distance Ax, you have to add that 4 there. Right, but remember, we have done one particular distance, that is AX, but we need to still find CX. All right, so to get CX, remember, we are looking the exact length of BX. We already proven it. That is fine. But now I'm going to go and show that angle CAB is equal to arctangent of 1 upon 4 plus 3, root 3. So for that, I need CX, and you will see exactly why. Well, so if you look at triangle CBX or BCX, then you have got the sine of 30 degrees, which is opposite over the hypotenuse. And you can also find that angle from here. So the sine opposite over the hypotenuse is nothing but one half. So sine 30 will therefore be replaced by a half. So 6 by a half gives you 3. So our distance for CX now is going to be 3 units or 3 centimeters. Right, so let me bring the whole ACX triangle and let me put in the values that I have calculated. Now that I have this, I don't really need to do anything with AC. That's going to be a question for the later part. I then have to use the tangent ratio in order for me to find or to prove that this angle here, CAB, is equal to the inverse tangent of 1 upon 4 plus 3 root 3. And you know that you find tangent by taking the opposite divided by the adjacent side. So it's going to therefore be that the inverse angle is equal to 1 upon 4 plus 3 root 3, which is exactly what we require to prove. Then there is a B part to the question. You're supposed to show here that the exact length of AC is equal to root or the square root of 52 plus 23 root 3. Right, so I've brought in the triangle here from the previous diagram. So this is the distance we're supposed to calculate. And if you can spot it, you should realize that this has to deal with the theory of Pythagoras, where AC squared is equal to AX squared plus XC squared. So just punching those values there, but you need to be a little bit careful when you do your expansion here. So eventually you should get 16 plus 24 root 3 plus 27. Now the 27 is very important that you understand that 27 where it comes from. Right, a lot of people will not see that. But if you take 3 root 
3 and you square that, remember it's nothing but 3 squared times the root 3 squared. Now, once you're here, you get 9. But now what is very important, and this, this you should know, is that the square root and the square, they cancel each other, leaving you only with 9 times 3, which is the 27. And uh, that is how we get this 27 that we have over here. And obviously this 9 comes nothing from that 3 squared over there. All right, so please make sure that your basic working is sound and that you don't make unnecessary mistakes. Okay, so now we're going to have to get to simplify this a little bit further. So I'm very close to where we need to be. So AC squared is equal to 24 root 3 plus 52. So I'm just going to rewrite them in this form, but now to get rid of the square, you have to take the square root. So hence, I have shown the exact length of AC. Right, there's a second question here. So again, you can write the question down, try to solve it yourself, pause the video. The question here deals with identities and then you also have an equation. So first they say the identity sin x plus cos x, 1 minus sin x cos x, is identical to sine cube x plus cosine cube x. You're supposed to show or to prove the identity. And then the part B, now you're being told here to solve an equation. And you see the left-hand side of this equation looks like the left-hand side of that identity there. And then they say it should equal to 9 sine cube x for x between 0 and 360 degrees. Now, this particular part, the left side, you can definitely just go punch in sine cube x plus cos cube x and let it equal to that. And then you manipulate that. But let's take it step by step and let's prove the identity first. Okay, so I'm taking the left-hand side of the identity because there's nothing much you can do on the right-hand side technically because everything is written in terms of sine and cos and it's just easier for you to do something here. So you need to multiply out these two brackets. So you remember, you're going to take the first term, multiply by every term in the second bracket and the second term, multiply by every term in the second bracket. And uh, this is what you're going to have when you do that. Now, I have color-coded sine square x and cos square x because I hope you still remember from your Pythagorean square identity that sine square x plus cos square x is equal to 1. So that means I can make sine square x the subject of the formula as well as cos square x the subject of the formula and punch in those values there. So if I was to take sin square x, which is this one here, I'm going to replace that by 1 minus cos square x. And then cos square x, what I have here on the other side, I'm going to replace that by 1 minus sin square x. Right, so that is what I have done here. And now what is left is I must just multiply out because there's a cos x that needs to multiply it into that and a sin x that needs to multiply into that. That is how you will eventually reach your cos square cube x and your sine cube x. Right, so just clean that up and you should arrive at sine x minus cos x plus cos cube x plus cos x minus sine x plus sine cube x. It's quite a mouthful there. Right, the sine x will cancel as well as the cos x, leaving you with sin cube x plus cos cube x, which is what we required to prove. So the right hand side, the left hand side is definitely equal to the right hand side. Therefore, I have proven the identity. Okay, so let's look at part B. Remember what I said? I'm just going to use sine cube x plus cos cube x is equal to 9 sine cube x because things are identical. So I can take the right hand side, let it equal to what you have here for the equation. Right, so I'm going to collect like terms, so to speak. 9 cube x minus sine cube x gives you 8 cube x or 8 sine cube x. And then you need to divide throughout by cos cube x. And the reason for that is because I want to change this to 10 cube x. And also I want to only work with one trig ratio, trig function. Right, so that gives you 1 is equal to 8 10 cube x. Well, if you can see this, this is going to give you 1 upon 8. And in order for you to get rid of that cube, you need to take the cube root. 
and the cube root of 1 upon 8 is nothing but a half. So our domain is from 0 to 360 degrees. So you need to understand from things like your cast diagram in which quadrant is tangent positive. And it is positive in the first and as well as in the third quadrant. So I have a diagram right there. So the basic acute angle here of 26.57 degrees is going to be a solution in the first quadrant, which is in our range, and that is one of our possible solution. And the next one, which is in the third quadrant, because tangent is positive in the third quadrant, you're going to take that angle, and you're going to add 180 to that angle. That is 206.6 degrees.